Hello everyone. Welcome to the Solidity Fundamentals course. I am Anjali and I will be your guide for this course. So today is the final lesson for this course in which we are going to discuss about the storage aspect in EVM. So the uh, lesson here is memory versus stack versus storage. So uh, as we know that the, uh, all the blockchain transactions or all the smart contracts are deployed on the EVM. So the EVM uh, is the main runner of every smart contract, main execution body of all the smart contracts. And as we have discussed it in the very first lesson, it's basically a, a stack machine, a low level machine wherein you deploy your code, but it's a sandboxed machine. So you are not able to access it directly. You just deploy your contract. So all the variables which you use, whether they are local variables or state variables or other data, so that is actually uh, you, uh, used by EVM and it's stored in multiple places. So now this EVM can store data in three different places. So first is storage. So there is a place demarcated as the storage area where EVM can store it. Second area where EVM can store it is memory. And third is a stack. So these all these three places, they reside within the EVM. But all these three places have their own uh, features and of also the gas consumption of all the three places is different. So depending upon our need, we need to select. Uh, sometimes we have the power to select, then we can specify that whether we want to store that particular data in storage or memory or stack. But some for some, the rules are fixed. So we are going to see today that how is the data which we write in our smart contract is being stored at the bank end on the EVM machine. So the first very important uh, place where this EVM is stored, EVM data is stored is storage. So here one thing we, which is 100% uh, which is uh, always true is that all these contract state variables reside in storage. So that means all the state variables, as we've discussed, there is something called a state variables, which we declare at the contract level outside the functions. So those state variables, as we have discussed, those variables always stay on the blockchain permanently. So that's why they're known as state variables, because they are able to change the state of the blockchain since they are come in the form of transactions and there is a proper write transaction which happen wherein the data is stored or read transactions happen wherein the data is read from the blockchain. So they are some permanent kind of variables which always stay on the blockchain and these permanent variables always reside in storage. So once all the variables which you have declared in your smart contract as state variables at the contract level outside the functions, all those variables will go in the storage area. So every contract has its own storage. So now this is a very important point that when we say that the uh, EVM stores it in the storage area, that does not mean that EVM being one single machine for the complete blockchain that it will have only one dedicated storage area wherein all the uh, data from all the different contracts, multiple lakhs and thousands, thousands and lakhs of contracts, the data is dumped there. So every contract is actually assigned its own storage area. So every contract has its own storage area and all these permanent storage values, which are the state variables, they are stored in that storage area, uh, which is allotted to that contract. Now, as we have discussed that it's a permanent kind of data, which will always stay on the blockchain. So it is also persistent between different function calls. So now if you are calling the mint function and later on you are calling a transfer function, there will be some variables which you have declared at the state level, at a state variables at the contract level, which are stored in storage. They will re always remain there and there will be no change in them. So these, the values which are stored in storage area for a particular contract are always permanent. So now this is, I think, very uh, is quite understood that since we are using this space to store our data forever, so that will cost us a lot of gas. So that is why, because that can be everybody's, uh, you know, our smart contracts or engineers. Uh, uh, it, it's a very uh, 
desirable thing to have a data stored permanently on the blockchain because it will be, be very easy to uh, read it and write it but again it comes at a cost and that is the gas consumption so that is why we need to be, and it's it's very uh, it's very expensive i think for uh, uh, for one uh, one word writing one word which is of 256 bits or 32 bytes so for one 32 byte word storage in storage it would it costs us almost 20000 units of gas which is very expensive so that is why we need to very judiciously make use of this uh, storage area and only store variables which we actually need to be stored permanently so now the storage area the data is stored in the form of key value store so we have discussed this key value thing beforehand also so before in earlier lessons also so here uh, the storage is done through key value store and data is stored in 256 bit slots as i told you 256 bits means 32 bytes and that is the size of one word we say that one word is always of 32 bytes or 256 bits so that so now in storage area it's small space, it's divided into slots of 256 bits where the data is packed and stored so we won't go into the details of packing but for now you just understand that in storage the storage is ha happens through key value scheme and the slots are fixed of 256 bit sizes and this is a very expensive but again the benefit of it is that it is used to store data permanently persistent between the function calls so you as smart contract engineers have to make the decision that what uh, data types you need to be stored in the storage area so moving on to a next place where evm can store data is the memory so memory is used to store data during a function execution so as we know in contract we declare some variables outside the functions at the contract level which are known as the state variables so as we have discussed previously the place for them is fixed that state variables will go in the storage area but what happens is that in functions there is a lot of data which you declare locally or there is some uh, calculations which you do so there is a choice there can be some data which is stored on memory or storage or stack so let's see what is uh, memory used for so first point memory is used to store data during the function execution and it is a temporarily uh, storage data type that means that all the data within a function execution even if there are local variables or if there is some data which you are making use of and uh, storing it in the memory of the evm machine then that will not be persistent between two different function calls once the function execution is over this data will be erased so this data is erased between function calls it is not persistent it is temporary so for a particular function execution you may declare 15 variables and you need to uh, save those variables obviously you need to save the state so for example you are doing some calculation and there is a variable a which has value 10 but after the whole steps the value of a may change so now you need some place to store that data to uh, temporarily store that data and that area is known as the memory area again as we know that since the data is not permanent it is temporary so definitely it consumes much less gas as compared to the storage which uh, stores the data permanently for us so uh, to give you an idea so the 256 bit uh, word was taking almost 20000 units of gas in storage and it almost takes 3 units of gas in memory that is the difference in storage and memory and in storage the, we were storing data in the key value format with 256 bit slots here also the slot size is 256 bits but here we do not use key value storage area we use a byte array and it's, it's a byte array and the slot size is fixed to be 256 bits and we store information here so uh, that's it for memory now let's move to the stack so stack is a, is a very simple kind of internal place where you uh, again hold data temporarily so it's not a permanent thing but it's used to hold very small local variables which do not uh, which cannot grow in size because the size of stack is limited so you cannot hold variables which can expand uh, quite a lot in by, during the execution dynamically so the stack is used to hold 
small local variables when i say local it means during the function execution obviously at the state level contract level you're storing everything in storage area but in stack you are holding the data and uh, storing it in uh, in the uh, uh, during the function execution so as we know that uh, the data is temporary here as well and since stack is a very simple machine and it's used to hold small variables it does not cost you much gas it's almost free to use but the limitation of it is that it can only be used to hold a limited amount of values because of the size limitations and here again it's a byte array format where you store the data it's it's a stack machine but the data here is stored in 32 bit slots earlier we saw that for both storage and memory data was being stored in 256 bit slots but here we are storing data in 32 bit slots so uh, now now we know that we have we know the difference between storage and memory and stack but there are certain rules in solidity language which are to be followed while we are declaring the variables for their uh, storage locations so let's look at those rules and we need to keep these rules in mind whenever we are declaring new variables so first as we have discussed and we have known we have implemented it also in our code that the state variables which we declare at the contract level will always be stored in storage so there is no question of memory or stack in this case state variables means permanent storage means storage now function arguments again there is no question all the function arguments so whatever parameters you pass in the function they always get stored in the memory area okay and also in uh, as we have discussed and we have seen that when you pass a string maybe array types like string in a function argument then specifically also you have to state explicitly word memory so now you understand that uh, even if you don't write memory other way parameters also actually by default they are stored in memory only but this is a constraint unique constraint by solidity language wherein if you are passing a string in a function you need to explicitly write the word memory and uh, uh, declare that this straight variable string variable which we are passing in the argument needs to be stored in the memory area now the local variables in the functions they the so local variables in functions would mean so whatever function uh, variables we declare inside the function and then their scope is only limited to that function now these can be stored in memory or they can be stored in storage or they can be stored in stack so the, you have all three options for straight variables you don't have that option for local variables you have the option but if the local variable is of type struct or array or mapping then which is so you can see that these are all the reference type data types so if you are basically trying to store these or you have to uh, basically trying to declare these and use these in a function then you either you need to uh, mention the word memory or storage it means you need to fix the location of that uh, storage area using memory or storage you can't store this data in stack because the size of the stack is limited and uh, data types like struct array or mapping they are reference type data types and they can really hold a lot of values so they need larger spaces to hold their data so you need to explicitly mention whether you want to store that data in memory or storage but not stack again finally all the local variables which are of smaller size simple types value types so other uh, as we seen struct array mapping for reference type but all the value types if it's a boolean or if it's an unsigned integer all these values they store it, they are stored always in stack so today's lesson this was the last lesson for our present course see you in the upcoming courses